Hey guys, this is Steven here with a puzzle app review for your iPhone, iPad, or Android. Personally, I played on my iPad as I feel the phone uh, screen would be a little too small and a little too difficult, but this is an app from Conceptus. It's called Philippix. It's a lot of fun, uh, probably one of my favorite puzzles out there. And what I'll do is I'll solve an example puzzle for you so you can see kind of how it unravels. But it reminds me a lot of Minesweeper. Each cell is gonna be filled in with black, or white or unshaded. The numbers in the cells indicate how many shaded cells are adjacent to that clue, uh, up to a nine maximum. And the clue itself can be shaded in. So that's what's different from Minesweeper. Um, and that's about it. Uh, what I'm gonna do is solve it again, share some common tips or tricks that'll hopefully make it easier for you to solve them yourselves in the future. And again, this is an app uh, it's free to download, and I'll have the link uh, below for you guys. So the first thing that I do is I look for zeros and nines. Obviously, those are the easiest. Here we have a zero. We know all the cells adjacent to it are going to be unshaded, so we can X those out. If we don't have any nines, uh, that's okay. We'll go from there. Uh, sixes along edges and fours and corners will yield you the same result. The six here, we know all of the cells are going to be shaded in. Since there's no cells to the right, uh, there's only six cells adjacent to the six. The spore's been solved now. You can see four cells are shaded, so we can X those out. And then when we're dealing with large numbers like this seven, we don't have to figure out where all the shaded cells are. If we can find where the unshaded cells are, that might be easier. So if you take nine minus the, the clue, here is seven, we only need to find two unshaded cells, which we already did. So we know that this seven is solved now uh, because there's no more unshaded cells. So all of these are shaded. This five's been solved. There's four here plus the one. So these two cells that are adjacent to the five are unshaded. Same with this two. We've already solved it with these two unshaded cells. Uh, so anything adjacent to that two uh, is unshaded. This three's in a corner. So we'll, there's only three cells left uh, to be shaded. This six uh, has three unshaded cells, so we've already solved that, right? Again, nine minus six is three. We have the three unshaded, so everything adjacent to that uh, had to be shaded. This three is solved, we can do that. This three's in a corner, so we can surround it. This one um, already has the shaded cell, so we can now basically unshade all the other ones. And um, this six already has the three unshaded cells, so we can shade in the others. This five looks to be solved, right? That's that pentomino, the W shape. So we can X that one out. Uh, this one solved, X those. This five has the four unshaded, so we can do that W shape again. This five solved has that little pentomino. Fives are easy because you can visualize the pentomino pretty quickly. The two solved, so we can X those out. Uh, this five needs that W shape. This five is the U shape. This three is solved. Um, this four is has to be those. This four is solved, it's, that's that Tetris shape. The five has that W shape, so we're good there. This three only has uh, one possibility, the two solved now. And what's nice about this is if you've played Minesweeper, I think you'll get really uh, good at this quickly because again, it's a lot of the same techniques and strategies. Um, this four here is forced. Same with that four. This one is solved. This four here is forced. That Tetris shape already has the S shape or the, the Z shape. This six has the three unshaded, so we know that those are all shaded. The one is solved, the four is forced, that four is forced, and there you go. Uh, it's done. So that was a very easy puzzle, again, just as an example. But one last thing to just know is that I typically try to look for large discrepancies between adjacent clues in the harder puzzles. And the reason for that is there's some special considerations when you have large differences. So if you have a difference of three, you know you can solve it right away because the three cells uh, above the pair needs to be all shaded. 
uh, and, and I'll try to see if there's an example here on this grid. Um, this four and the seven, right? So they're adjacent to one another orthogonally, and there's a difference of three. So you can see above the pair on the higher side, the seven, these three cells have to be all shaded in no matter what. And then on the opposite side, if there were cells, these had to be all unshaded, right? And since they're out of the grid, you know, they're not considered shaded anyways. If you have a difference of two, then uh, the difference on, on each side is, is two. So if you take this five and seven, here there's two shaded cells out of the three, and so there's no shaded cells over here. Uh, same thing, the five minus the three, so there's no shaded cells here. There has to be two shaded cells on the opposite side. Um, and here's a difference of one. So on one side, you have to have one more shaded cell. So here we have three. So on the other side, you have to have two out of the three. So hopefully that makes sense. I did another tutorial video that was a little bit longer, a little bit more details. If you want to um, see a little bit more about those spe special considerations, I'll link uh, to that video uh, either here or, or here. Um, go ahead and click on that, check it out. But if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day.